guided by the discretion that has been given by the legislature and the commission to appointing authorities to select any one of the top three candidates that may be on a list. And that furthers the purposes of the civil service system and the merit appointment system by enabling an appointing authority to look beyond uh, what the <coughs> results of an examination may show and to dig a little deeper into the background of the candidates and to select someone that the appointing authority thinks, and I'll use some of the language that it used in this case, better meets the needs of that appointing authority. But yet, with all due respect, that language means nothing. That's, I mean, what does that mean other than uh, we picked the person we wanted to pick? That's not a statement of reasons. That's not an explanation. And, and the civil service rules and the regulations find their source from our, our state constitution, which says that appointment shall be made according to merit and fitness to be ascertained as far as practicable by examination, which as far as practicable shall be competitive. Now, this is your regulation. And your regulation requires the appointing authority to give a statement of reasons. And saying that we picked the person that we thought was the most qualified, is that a statement of reasons that the Civil Service Commission is able to examine? Or is that merely, or are you just rubber stamping with, with those words, the decision of the appointing authority? Well, in this case, it's true that the initial statement by the appointing authority was best meets the needs. But, when asked by Mr. Folio to explain the reasons, the appointing authority came forward and said, well, it was because we were more impressed by the others' interviews that wasn't and by their education. That wasn't to you. So he, you, are you, you saying that the legal standard is made because Mr. Foley on the side speaks to the business ma manager and, and says, like, why I wasn't appointed? And, and that now, that side conversation is going to be a sufficient explanation for the Civil Service Commission? There was a, an additional... Why aren't, you, why aren't you demanding an appropriate statement of reasons as required by your own regulations? Regulation asks for a statement of reasons. Now, that the reasons that were initially given by the appointing authority were its statement of reasons. Do you agree that those reasons were inadequate? Well... I think if the candidate believes that the selection was inappropriate in some way, based on some improper motives, he can bring that to the Civil Service Commission. That's not what you were asked, counsel. You were asked by the Chief Justice, do you believe that the statement, eligible best meets needs of department, is the kind of statement that your regulation requires? Does that satisfy the regulatory requirement? On its face, it does. Because the regulation requires a statement of reasons, and it leaves it up to the appointing authority to come forward. With what if they opinion. said, we, we, cho no, we chose them because we liked them? Would that be adequate? Absent an improper motive. I, I want to know, know what would be inadequate if, if, that, if that passes the test, actually. This difficulty I have with the statement of reasons that was initially provided is that it seems that it could apply in every single case. And the regulation requires a statement of reasons why the appointee was selected instead of someone that's, else. That's right. So shouldn't there be some individualized explanation in order to satisfy the requirement of the regulations? I don't have any problem with an individualized explanation insofar as it describes why the appointing authority appointed the, the people that it did. I don't think there's a problem with that. I don't think that the statute or the rule as currently constructed requires that. It may be a good idea from a human resources management perspective to provide that, but that's something that the appointing authority... Well, I take it you're saying... I'm sorry. I take it that you're saying that under the Constitution that Justice Alvin referred to and the statute, you don't need the regulation or reasons because the statutory rule of three properly implemented would get the best person. But the Chief just pointed out 
the regulation is a statement of the reasons why the appointee was selected instead of a higher ranking eligible. Now, do you believe others better meet or satisfy the needs or best meet the needs of the department is a comparison within the meaning of the regulation that has in fact been promulgated? Well, I read that language to mean better suited in comparison to the other candidates. But that's the question that we have to grapple with. How do we review the exercise of discretion when we have none of the factors that were taken into account in the exercise of that discretion? All we know is all we know is a conclusory statement that says best meets needs of department. We don't know how that conclusion was reached. So there's no way to gauge it. And and I don't think that you're telling us just trust us. We'll get it right because that's the case. We can just wrap up today and all go home. Well, 